11. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. It'll also be up on the screen. Stand with me, you would please, for the reading of God's Word. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 11. Simply just a beautiful song that depicts as a Christian how we should choose to live as one who's learned compassion who one who has learned to live for God and to give him thanks in Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 11 says now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach it is not up in the heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so that we may obey it. No, the very word is near you. It is in your mouth. It's in your heart so that you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God and to walk in His ways and to keep His commands and decrees and His laws. Then you will live and increase. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your hearts turn away and you, do not, and you are not obedient and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God listen to his voice and hold fast to him for the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers Abraham Isaac and Jacob let's pray together father speak to our hearts this morning as the song was played then I shall live as one who's been forgiven question becomes this morning, are we living that way? As we enter this service, Lord, it's time to choose how we're going to conduct ourselves from this day moving forward. So speak to our hearts. Let us hear, not from the preacher, but let us hear from you. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Set before us today is two choices. The one choice leads to great blessing. The other choice leads to destruction. One choice leads to promise and prosperity. The other choice leads to death and destruction, the death of dreams, the death of hopes, the death of uh, all kinds of things, and destruction of the home, destruction of the family, destruction of uh, your marriage, your uh, job. I mean, you, you name it. God has set before us the opportunity to choose. And I, and I think that's the great thing about God is that God gives us as humans the free moral agency to do whatever it is we choose to do. But he sets down before us the consequences of doing what against his word. And then he also shows us the uh, promises if we do his word. And maybe today the, the reason why we're, things are happening the way that, that you know, I mean, I just, it's just amazing the things that are, are being destructed today by the devil is maybe because we haven't fully bought into the fact that we as God's people have to live as God directs us. Now that's not easy. And it's easier to go with the flow, to do what everybody else is doing. Especially in the day that we're living because uh, there seems to be a, a marginalization of Christianity. <clears throat> but if you will stand, if you will stand and make a decision that I choose to live for Christ, you, my friend, will be blessed no matter what you face. And so this morning, God has given us a choice. Life and prosperity. There's blessings, living for Him. But then there's also death and destruction. Curses. 
Now this also was set forth in the Garden of Eden. Before sin entered into the Garden of Eden, everything was great. There was no sickness. There was no sin. There was no problems. Adam uh, got Eve and Eve was a hot woman and he recognized it and they were great. <coughs> sin enters into the picture. Now they start fussing, they start fighting, there's, there's all kinds of problems, Cain kills Abel, all these things start happening, work becomes hard, you know, relationships become challenging. And listen, the, the whole root problem behind challenges in our relationships and in our homes and in our families, the whole root problem behind it is sin. The devil doesn't want you successful. The devil doesn't want you to have a successful life, a successful marriage. He doesn't want you to be a successful teen. He doesn't want you to be a successful young person. He doesn't want you to be a successful adult. He wants you to be able to be strung out on drugs, kicked over in the corner somewhere, a drunk, a reject and all that so that he can say, ha ha, look, look what they chose. They chose me. And God has set before us a different course that man must grasp toward. It is not easy. But anything easy is probably not worth having anyways. This life means that we're going to have to work. We're going to have to strive. We're going to have to get it, you know, the, like you get into the gym to lose weight or you run or you exercise. You're going to have to do some of these things to walk in the fullness of what it is God's got for you. Now, you don't, don't misunderstand me. You don't work to get saved. But on the flip side of that, you can't sit back and say, well, now I'm saved and I don't have to do anything. You have to do a lot. Because the devil's going to come, come against you. The devil's never going to bother you when you're not a Christian. But honey, get born again and watch what happens. Start making a commitment to going to church and doing what's right and see what happens. The devil's going to hit you with everything he's got. So you're going to have to fight back. And so before us today is set two choices. Life and death. Blessings and cursings. So how do we walk into the life and the prosperity and the blessings that God has got for us? Well, we simply may have to make a choice to begin to choose to believe the Word of God. Look at verse 11 in this passage of Scripture, 11 through 14. Now what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you, and it's not beyond your reach. And I like that there because it's a... Go back there. Don't, go, go back real quick. I like that because look at what he's saying. What I'm telling you to do, you're able to do it. It's not that hard. It's not too difficult and it's not beyond your ability to grasp it. All you have to do is reach out and take hold. That's what he's saying. Now verse number 12 uh, says that uh, it is not up in the heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us. You don't even, what this is saying is that you don't even need me telling you what it says. Verse number 13. And it's not beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim to us. So if it's not too difficult to get and it's not in the heavens so that we have to send somebody to get it and it's not in the sea so that we have to have Jacques Cousteau go after it where is it? Verse 14 sums it up like this he says that no the word is very near it's in your mouth and in your heart so that you may obey it and in today in which we live it's right here before your eyes and all one must do is choose to believe and obey. The old song we sang many a year in the old little country church was trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus than to trust and obey. And boy, you know what? That's true. That's true. And so here we need to understand that what God is asking us to do is not too hard. Now think about this, when this was written, the Holy Spirit had not descended upon all people at that time. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit descended from time to time upon people, and so that they would, they would share what God had. But it was not until Pentecost that God's people were infilled with the Spirit. So if in the Old Testament, Deuteronomy says it's not too hard, how much more easy is it for us as New Testament believers who have the Holy Spirit of God living on the inside of us to direct us and guide 
guide us to what is right and what is wrong. Now listen, when you get born again, inside of you is placed the Holy Spirit and you can make bad decisions. But I promise you that when you go to do it, you'll hear that voice inside of you saying, don't do that. That's not the best. God's got something else for you. And so we simply have to choose to believe the Word of God. In this book is found uh, not the rules, but what I think is a, a bag of seed. And seed, if it's sown in good soil, that will produce a harvest. A good harvest. A blessing in your life. And so we have, to, we have to choose this morning to believe the Word. Is the Word in your life the, the guiding the light upon everything that you do? Do you consult the Word of God when you're making decisions for your marriage? Because we've been talking about marriage. Do you consider the Word of God? Husbands, do you love your wife as the Scripture tells us? We're to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Wise, we're to submit ourselves to our husbands. Are we doing that? Or do we say, well, now, you know, hold on now, preacher, it's 2014. I'm not submitting to nobody. Or, preacher, it's 2014. I, I'm not doing, I'm not loving her like I are to, but, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a contract and not a covenant. I sat down with a young couple this week who's getting ready to get married. And I said, you know, I'm to the point where I really don't like doing a whole lot of weddings anymore because the most of the reality is most people today view marriage as a contract. I will love you until I get tired of you, I find a newer model, you get on my nerves, I'll love you until. Ladies and gentlemen, relationships and marriage is supposed to be a covenant. And a covenant in God's eyes was unbreakable. I will love you in the good times, in the bad. In sickness and in health, for richer, for poor, for better. And if you got, if you married a man, most of the time you gonna get the worst part. And all the women said, Amen. "You get the best." You know, we don't operate at a hundred percent all the time, but we got the capacity, to, you know, to be all right from time to time. So just when the good time, you know, when we when we operate good and act right, just let God thank you that today He's acting right, because Lord knows what tomorrow might bring. But we have to choose what's stronger in your life: the word or the opinions of the world. Do I believe in the word more than I believe in what the world has to say? Because the world has a philosophy too, now you know. It's called secular humanism. And that's what's being taught in our universities today, secular humanism. If it feels good, do it. There is no right, there is no wrong, there is no such thing as absolute truth. It's all a shade of gray. And so whatever you feel like doing, just go do it. Because after all, you're not hurting nobody but yourself. No, yeah, you are. You're blurring the lines of what society is supposed to look like when you go outside the realm of the things that God asks us to do. And that's why you see the ramifications in our country of what's happening when we don't do the things of God. People are, uh, our country's in a mess, our families are in a mess, individuals are in a mess, our workplaces are in a mess. And all it takes to turn this around, folks, is simple. <clears throat> Choose to believe the Word of God and operate in it. I set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Choose life simple enough and it's it's not so hard that you can't reach it it's there it's in your it's in your mouth it's in your heart so that you may obey it it's before your eyes all you have to do is apply it and you need to know the third thing this morning <clears throat> is that there's power there is power in your words there's power in your tongue proverbs 1821 i don't know if i give it to you Waylon, or not but if you can look it up real quick proverbs 1821 there is power in your words. The power of life and blessings are in our words. And so many times we don't realize it, what we're saying. The old saying that we all grew up listening to, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, is not true. Sticks and stones will break your bones and your bones will heal. But words that are spoken in anger or negative words will hurt you to the soul 
And while you may forgive them, they'll never be forgotten. The tongue has the power of life and death. Now, you can destroy somebody's future. Take a young person today. Take some of these young people in the room. <clears throat> Set them down and for the next 18 years begin to tell them they're nobody, they're nothing, they can't, they won't, they're no good, they wish they were never born, wish they were never here, that they're not, they're, you're stupid, you're retarded, you can't do it, you won't make nothing of yourself. Keep telling them that over and over and over and guess what happens? For a lot of them, they begin to believe in that. Take your marriage, tell your wife constantly, you know, uh, you can't do nothing nothing right. You're no good. Tell your husband, well, you can't do this right. You can't do the right. There is power in what we say. And so we must guard our words. The truth of the matter is we won't be perfect on this all the time. I don't always say the right things to my wife, nor does my wife always say the right things to me. But we must guard against this as much as we can because our words have ramifications. Don't go around speaking negative, defeated words all the time. Speak the Scripture. Start just pumping yourself up with believing, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. When you feel lonely and down, you remind yourself by speaking out loud, He'll never leave me nor forsake me. I know that my Savior lives. I know He's here. Now, Faith comes by, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing from the Word of God. And so, <clears throat> the reciprocal of that is true. Doubt comes by hearing, hearing anything other than the Word of God. And so you fight thoughts with words because the devil attacks us here. This is the ground where the devil hits us. And we don't fight back with positive thinking. We've been taught that on television for a long time. These preachers talking about you just think positive and everybody think be fine. No, that's not how it works. You fight thoughts with words. Speak the Word of God. And so we must evaluate today. What, what's my word saying? What are my words saying about me? Am I speaking defeated? Am I looking at my spouse and saying they'll never be any better? They'll never change? Am I looking at my job saying it'll never be any better? It'll never change? Am I looking at my situation in life saying it will never be better or it, and it will never change? Or are we choosing to believe, in, to believe the Word of God? Are we choosing to make a choice to live with life and prosperity? And are we choosing to, to guard what we're saying? And when you catch yourself saying something negative, oh, nope, I can't do that. Jesus lives on the inside of me. And I choose to believe what this scripture has to say. Finally, there's power in your seed. Look at Galatians in the New Testament. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 9, 7 through 9. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. What a man reaps, a man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. Now understand this. A man reaps what he sows. You have two options. You sow to the flesh or you sow to the Spirit. If you sow to the flesh, the Scripture says that you're going to reap, you're going to reap destruction. What that simply means is this. If you think that you can do your own thing and live your own way and make your own decisions and not consult God on anything, not have God in your life and think that you're going to be successful, you have become deceived. Go back to verse number 7, Waylon. Look again. Look at what this says here in verse number 7. Do not be deceived. If you think you're going to do it your way without God, you have become deceived. Whatever you sow, that shall you also reap. You reap what you sow. Alright? So we go back to verse 8 and it says again that the one who sows to please the sinful nature, that's the, that's the flesh, that's the part of you that doesn't get born again. When you get born again, you have to choose now to live as, as a born again person or a non-born again person. It's your choice. Excuse me. But you're going to reap from that nature. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Verse number 9. 
Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we'll reap a harvest if we do not give up. If you'll reap to the Spirit, you're going to reap eternal life, but you're also going to reap the benefits of living a Christian life and living out the Word of God here. If you don't give up. And many people are giving up just short of the finish line. Just short of where the goal is, where you're about to walk into the blessings of God, people are giving up. Well, it didn't happen today, so I guess I'll just forget it. It didn't happen in a week's time. God didn't answer the prayer in a week's time. I'm going to quit. I've been a Christian for 20 years and God hasn't fixed anything yet or hadn't answered this particular prayer. I'm going to quit. No, if you won't give up, you this is the promise. You will reap a harvest. But you have to make the decision to what? Not give up. So let me ask you this morning in closing. Where are you at in your life? Where are you at? Life or death? Blessings or curses? We choose. We choose one of them. Now, it is very possible to be a Christian and be born again and not be walking in the blessings of God because you're not choosing to do anything with the Word. You, you, you were satisfied with being born again, missing hell and going to heaven, and you're satisfied with that, and you're not walking in the promises of God, or as the old song says, you're not standing on the promises of God. And so in your life, you know, it would be sad, in my opinion, it would be sad and would be a, would be a shame to, to miss all the blessings that God's got us for us in life as Christians. It's a shame just to be satisfied with going to heaven and not experiencing any of the goodness that God has got here because God wants to bless His people while we're here. Why? So it's a testimony to the world. And so we can say, look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me and it was just in time. The old song says that. Where are you at? Honestly? What does your word say about you? Are you speaking more negative than you are positive? And are you believing the word for your situation? Whatever you're facing this morning, financial, family, relationship, children, job, life in general, are you believing the word? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to choose. It's time to choose which side of the fence we're going to walk on. Because which side we're on makes a world of difference. It's time to choose Jesus as your Savior. And quit worrying about getting everything right and fixed up in your life. <clears throat> choose Jesus because He's chosen to save you just as you are if you would come. It's time to choose to put the Lord at the center of our home, at the center of our relationships, at the center of our life. It's time to choose to walk away from the negative and walk into the blessings. It's time to choose to separate ourselves from some... We may need to separate ourselves from some relationships, from some friendships, so that we can be more of what God wants us to be. time to choose to be the man that God has called you to be. It's time to choose to be the husband that God has called you to be. That means men, we're responsible for our families. We're responsible that when you said I do to that little lady, or as Brother Gaylor calls Betty Jo his little sweetie, when you made the decision to say I do to that little sweetie of yours, it should have been for a lifetime. That there will be ups and there will be downs and there will be struggles and there will be disagreements, but it's time to make the decision that I will be the man she deserves. Lady, it's time to choose. I will be the woman that he deserves. I will be the employee that my boss deserves. I will be the Christian that God deserves. When we think about all that Jesus did for us, 
Are we living it out? So that one day we will hear the Savior say, Welcome in thy good and faithful servant. Let's stand our feet.